Hello everybody, Jordan here, the PH is silent. It's the last planner video, Acheron and Mechanus. I should do a video on Sigil though, and the Outlands, so that'll probably be next. But let's jump in with the internal battlefield of Acheron. It's a place where ignorant armies clash by night, a plane of enforced order where conformity is more important than good. Conflict, war, strife, struggle is all you'll find in Acheron. The entire planet is engulfed in a cry of battle. It has four layers, each an island of continent-sized iron cubes. These cubes float in an airy void and occasionally collide with one another, creating large clangs that echo throughout the plain. The orc god Grumish lives here, as well as Maglubiot, the goblin deity. So naturally, the plain is home to a variety of orcs and goblins, but many other species as well. Renegade armies wander the faces of Acheron, looking for an enemy to fight. There is little organization in Acheron. The plane leads thoughts to mutiny or madness, which soon bring down even the strongest military leaders. Devils, imps, Fomorians, Rashasas, dragons, and Yugoloths inhabit Acheron. And clockwork creatures from Mechanus keep a few hidden mining colonies scattered throughout the lowest layers of Acheron. Also, Acheron is home to enormous flocks of birds. Ravens, vultures, gulls, and bloodhawks thrive here, living off the death and destruction of the battlefield. The souls that wind up in Acheron are those that killed often and killed happily, usually for a cause they did not believe in. The cubes that make up Acheron are scarred and dented from their many collisions. The plane is illuminated by a gray fluctuating light that varies between moonlight and a dark cloudy day. The first layer of Acheron is called Avalas. Also called the Battle Plains, it contains the most cubes. They vary from city-sized to continent-sized, the smaller ones being the oldest, having been worn down by eons of collisions. It is here in Avalas, on the cube, Clangor, that the goblin deity Maglubiot resides. It's carved and tunneled to house the great goblin nation that lives here. Next to Clangor is Nishrik, which is the great cube that houses Grumish, the one-eyed deity of the orcs. The goblins and orcs are in constant war with one another. The barracks here are chaotically arranged with wandering tunnels. Although Grumish cares not for this fight and has his eye against Corallon, the elven deity that plucked out his left eye. Thuldanin, the second layer, is much like the first, but with a smaller populace. The entire layer is riddled with a broken machinery of war. Siege towers, steam-driven weapons, flying devices, and contraptions with obscure sources of power and purpose. The layer is home to salvagers and opportunists hoping to uncover items of fantastic power which they can use or copy. However, they don't stay long because this layer has an aura that will gradually turn a creature to stone. Tintibalus has the least cubes of the rest of the layers, home to shapes of various sides such as a four-sided tetrahedron or a five-sided pentahedron, hexahedron, dodecahedron, etc. Grab your dice set because there's a large stone polyhedron shaped just like them. The floating solids are covered in a gray volcanic ash that is several inches deep. When collisions occur, the geometric solids fracture along its natural fault lines, splitting into two smaller solids. The constant collision creates a ringing that does not stop. Few creatures live here. Finally, Ocanthus, the last layer, has no light and is filled with fast-flying razor-thin shards. It's a constant blizzard of blade-like items that make this area truly inhospitable. These shards are made from black ice that hit one another and become smaller and deadlier, ultimately turning into a fine dust. They originate from a sheet of infinite, magically charged black ice that exists on this layer. Nobody knows if the ice sheet is a boundary or a barrier between Ocanthus and some deeper layer. It is largely unexplored. Mechanus is next, which is law reflected in a realm of clockwork gears. Known as the Clockwork Narvana of Mechanus, it's home to giant cogs and gears that are in constant motion, engaged in a calculation so vast that no deity can fathom its purpose. Mechanus embodies absolute order. It is the plane of ultimate law, where premeditated plans are born. It is the gearworks for the multiverse. Every kind of law can be found in Mechanus, from simple maxims to devilishly twisted rules of decorum. For the most part, Mechanus contains no passion, illusion, or pain. At the center of most cogs are freestanding portals that lead to other planes of existence, and yet some lead to another cog within Mechanus. Mechanus is a single, infinite plane with defined layers. The wheels or cogs are composed of stone, earth, and metal ores. Many cogs are more than a thousand miles across and turn so slowly it's mistaken for stillness. There are creatures that inhabit Mechanus that are not native to the plane of law. Colonists from the material plane, the Nine Hells, and even Celestia transform sections of Mechanus to better suit their style or needs. But mainly, Mechanus is inhabited by constructs. The most famous inhabitants are the Modrons. 
The Modrons themselves are a totally alien regimented race. It's a hive-like hierarchical structure depending on how many sides a Modron has. The bottom of the barrel is the Monodrones, which are spherical and can take only one order, which comes from their superiors, the Duodrones, which can then follow more orders coming from their superiors, the Tridrones, and up and up all the way to the One, known as Primus. His power over the Modrons is absolute. All obey Primus and carry out his plans. If ever a Modron is killed, their body disappears and the energy returns to Mechanus, which then spawns a new Modron. If the balance between Monodrones and Duodrones is off, a Modron will ascend and become a Duodrone. In the same way, Primus, although godlike, can be killed. If he ever is, then the highest ranking Modron is then promoted to his position and becomes a new Primus. Modrons are capable of speech, except the monodrones, but don't understand certain concepts, like individual names, for example, or disorderly behavior. They are so tied up in the plane of law that they have a hard time understanding chaotic concepts. Because of this, they end up ignoring lots of things. It's easier to disregard than it is to figure out. Every 300 years or so, there is something known as the Great Modron March. An extremely large number of Modrons leave Mechanus traveling clockwise across the plains, through Arcadia and the Beastlands, down through the Abyss and the Nine Hells before returning to Mechanus. It is unclear why this happens, and many have discovered it's easier to stay out of their way and let the Modrons pass. You can read more about this in the Planescape adventure, The Great Modron March, which is a classic, so check it out. And that's it. We've covered all the planes of existence. Pretty sweet. There is still the Outlands and Sigil, which I'll cover next week. Um, thanks for going on this journey with me, and I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Feel free to leave me a comment below detailing your upcoming Modron game. Give a like and consider subscribing for more videos, and I'll see you all next Wednesday.